Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 134th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, I wanted to talk about jailbreaking and some news related to jailbreaking, but also after I wanted to go over some commonly asked questions that I still receive even after answering them in the past couple of episodes. But first, before I do that, let's go over the news. So, following last week's jailbreak news from POSIX Ninja, another prominent member of the jailbreak community confirmed what I suspected for quite some time. In a series of tweets, Pod2G, who as many of you may already know, is one of the four evaders and was instrumental in the development of the Evasion Untethered Jailbreak Utility for iOS 6.0 through 6.1.2, stated that the new dev team isn't in the process of developing a 6.1.3 jailbreak. Now, after leaving the exploits utilized by the Evasion Jailbreak Utility untouched in both 6.1.1 and 6.1.2, Apple finally patched the latest untethered jailbreak with the recent release of iOS 6.1.3 on March 19th. And recently, in a somewhat mysterious tweet, Pod2G announced that he's discovered, quote, another exploitable use after free web kit. Shortly after, the hacker and iOS security expert was flooded with an insurmountable number of questions pertaining to iOS 6.1.3 and its jailbreak status. Now, although Pod2G mentioned in his tweet that he simply discovered vulnerabilities in the production builds of Safari and Chrome browsers, he essentially reignited the public's interest in a new jailbreak utility for Apple's iOS 6.1.3 firmware. And unfortunately, in response to one of his followers, Pod2G stated what I've been saying since iOS 6.1.3's release. The new firmware just simply doesn't make the cut. The evaders haven't deemed 6.1.3 a substantial enough update to create an entirely new jailbreak around it. However, with that said, the same tweet also brings hope to all who have accidentally updated to iOS 6.1.3 and are now permanently stuck on the latest firmware without a jailbreak. In the last part of Pod2G's tweet, he said, quote, we're waiting for a major release. And this six word sentence confirms that the team will indeed develop another jailbreak in the future. Now in the past, developers have waited for both new devices and new versions of iOS to be released before pushing out an untethered jailbreak to the public. Now this method of waiting for the opportune moment to issue a new jailbreak utility effectively allows them to be used with firmwares and devices they wouldn't have supported if released earlier and patched by Apple. Now, on a related note, following last week's news from POSIX Ninja, when he announced that he's also in the process of developing a jailbreak on his own, he sent out another tweet saying that the public likely won't see his jailbreak until the days of iOS 7.0.x or 7.1.x. So it could be some time before POSIX Ninja actually releases his jailbreak and of course, that is the smartest thing to do from his perspective, because right now 6.1.3 just isn't a big enough update to release a new untethered jailbreak and then burn through the exploits, which will then just be patched by Apple. And unfortunately, if the developers were to release a new untethered jailbreak right now, those same exploits would not be able to be used for newer iDevices once Apple releases them. So like I said earlier, hopefully this method will allow them to preserve the exploits for use with newer firmwares and newer devices. Now, as far as the jailbreak questions I received, there are basically three of them, and I'm going to start out with the most commonly asked question, which is whether or not iOS 6.1.3 can be jailbroken. And unfortunately, the answer has two parts to it. Yes, iOS 6.1.3 can be jailbroken using Red Snow and a Red Snow workaround, but it can only be jailbroken for the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod Touch, and that's because it utilizes GeoHot's old 2010 Lime Rain exploit and it's actually based off of a boot ROM exploit, which is a hardware vulnerability that has since been patched by Apple with the release of new iOS devices. So only those three devices can be jailbroken on 6.1.3 using Red Snow. And also keep in mind, it is a tethered jailbreak, which means you will have to plug your device into your computer and rerun a certain part of Red Snow to get it to boot back up into its fully functional jailbroken state every time it has to be rebooted. But of course you can convert that tethered jailbreak into a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak. And that's probably the question I get asked the most behind whether or not 6.1.3 is able to be jailbroken. So I'll tackle that right now in the next 
explanation is rather simple. A tethered jailbreak, like I just stated before, relies on a computer to boot into its jailbroken state if it turns off or if you have to reboot it. Whereas an untethered jailbreak does not require the assistance of a computer to reboot, you can simply reboot it as you would a non-jailbroken device. Now, things get a little tricky when you start talking about a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak. Now, initially the term just started out as semi-tethered, but since the term semi-untethered jailbreak has been coined. They both mean the same exact thing though. So once you jailbreak your older device using Red Snow, you can then convert that tethered jailbreak into a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak. And what that will allow you to do is reboot your device with limited functionality. It basically acts as your lifeline if you absolutely have to reboot and you don't have a computer around. So of course, installing that package that converts that tethered jailbreak into a semi-tethered or a semi-untethered jailbreak is definitely recommended. And if you have one of the devices supported by Red Snow, just be sure to check out my in-depth iOS 6.1.3 jailbreak tutorial. I'll have a link to that down below in the more info. And if you're on any previous version of iOS 6, which does include 6.0, 6.0.1, 6.0.2, 6.1, 6.1.1, 1, and 6.1.2, then you can jailbreak your iDevice with evasion. And it does support any device that's on one of those firmwares. So I'll have a link to that tutorial down below as well. And now I'm going to answer the third question I get asked the most, and that's whether or not you can downgrade from 6.1.3 to 6.1.2 or a lower firmware that you would then be able to jailbreak with evasion. And unfortunately, the answer is no. You cannot downgrade your device from iOS 6.1.3 unless it's the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, or the fourth generation iPod Touch. And even then, you need your SHSH blobs backed up on that firmware. If you haven't backed up your SHSH blobs, or you don't know whether you have, chances are good you haven't and you won't be able to downgrade from 6.1.3. In which case, you'll just have to jailbreak with Red Snow and make do with a tethered jailbreak. But as for all of the newer devices like the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, the iPad mini, or even the fifth generation iPod Touch, you will not be able to downgrade to an earlier firmware. Unfortunately, you're stuck and you'll just have to wait until someone like POSIX Ninja or the Evaders release another untethered jailbreak. And of course, I will keep you guys completely updated on the jailbreak status at all times in this series on my YouTube channel in general, on Best Tech Info, and if you guys want another source for great jailbreak information, be sure to check out evasionjailbreak.com. I'll have a link to that site down below in the more info, and it's actually a site that I help manage so you know you're getting accurate information. All right, moving on. Earlier this week in a branch chat, John Grubber from Daring Fireball said that according to his sources, iOS 7 is running behind schedule and that the next major iOS installment will bring significant visual user interface or UI changes. And after stating that engineers have allegedly been pulled from working on Apple's next Mac OS X update, which is expected to be 10.9, Grubber went on to reiterate that iOS 7 will be a quote, significant system-wide UI overhaul. Also, back in 2007, Apple purposefully delayed the release of OS X Leopard to focus their efforts mostly on the original iPhone. And the same is rumored to be happening with Mac OS 10.9 and iOS 7. Now the supposed iOS 7 visual enhancements are in fact said to be so great that the select number of iOS engineers who are allowed to carry devices with the firmware are required to have special privacy filters to reduce the viewing angle. And while it seems extreme, this precautionary measure is an effective means of preventing others from accidentally getting a glimpse of the new iOS visual experience. Now there's also some additional information on iOS 7, the next generation iPad, and the rumored iPhone 5S in the article that I've linked to below. So just be sure to check it out if you're at all interested. And finally in the news, I wanted to discuss a new patent that was publicized yesterday by Patently Apple. And the new patent application has recently been published by the official United States Patent and Trademark Office. And the patent may offer some insight as to what improvements iOS 7 will bring to Apple's already well-established mobile ecosystem. It details a completely new and more interactive animated lock screen that is capable of providing quick access to frequently used applications without having to slide to unlock and or inputting the device's security passcode. However, that doesn't mean that anybody who uses your device will be able to access the applications that appear on the lock screen. Through this patent, the user will be able to bypass the traditional slide to unlock method by entering a unique predefined input using the home button, which appears to be virtual, to enter a new quick access access mode that's also detailed. Moreover, in some instances, only certain portions of applications may be used through the quick access mode, while others are blocked to protect the user's privacy if their home button input is discovered. 
For example, while the device will be able to take pictures using the camera, viewing previously taken pictures may be prevented unless the device is fully unlocked. And in addition to the quick access design, Apple has proposed a new animated user interface that allows access to applications through an intuitive and clever means. And this could very well be one of the UI enhancements in iOS 7 that Grubber detailed in the branch chat that took place earlier this week. And there's also additional information related to a completely new and intuitive home button for future iDevices in the article. And I highly recommend reading it in its entirety. All right, and that concludes the news for today's episode. Now I want to discuss giveaways. So my previous $100 Amazon on gift card giveaway has concluded. I did select a winner at random and I have contacted them. However, I'm going to hold a new giveaway. As some of you may already know, last week after filming the previous episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, I was selected by Google to participate in their Google Glass Explorer program, which will allow me to purchase a near finalized version of Google Glass in the weeks to come. And while they have yet to provide additional details before they actually announce the participants of their Google Glass Explorer program, I made a deal with you guys. I said that if I was selected, I'd give away an iPhone 5. Now I'm still going to do that. I'm just going to wait until I get Google Glass. So until then, I'm holding another $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. And the rules to enter are identical. All you have to do is rate this video up, hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment is posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And I will provide more more details on my upcoming iPhone 5 giveaway, again, once I receive my Google Glass unit. And now for the question of the day, what features do you hope Apple will include in iOS 7? Just be sure to let me know in the comment section or on Best Tech Info. And also you can leave any of your thoughts related to iOS 7. I'm really curious to see what you guys think. All right, and that's it for now. And again, don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it and to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.